All right, welcome back, Prospect Live viewers. We're back with another 2020 MLB Draft team preview. Joining me today is Joe Doyle from the site. Joe, the Tampa Bay Rays, uh, an absolute juggernaut in terms of how the organization is run. I know that's something we were saying off air prior to jumping on here. They develop well. They draft well. They scout well. Their international signings have been tremendous of late. Uh, and they make great, great trades. So, Overall, it's a top organization in baseball, and they do it on a shoestring budget. They have a few yeah, they have a few picks to play with this year, with twenty four and thirty seven in particular. I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are. Where do you think they go at twenty four and thirty seven? Well, Tampa has never been afraid to go after. Athletes up the middle and versatility. It's kind of their MO, uh, that in arms. So immediately you kind of draw your eyes to the college shortstop ranks. And 24 is about where you would expect some of these guys to start coming off the board uh, with teams like, you know, Minnesota, teams like the Yankees also targeting those types of position players. So I think Nick Lofton at 24 is a pretty good fit. Uh, Lofton can play all over the diamond. He can play third base. He can play left field. Um, he could play second base, of course. So I think he's a good fit. And I also think uh, with Lofton, there's there's some untapped potential of what we don't know there. Never was a guy that hit for a ton of power, but early here in 2020, he was starting to showcase some, some moonshots, frankly, at Baylor. Um, so I think he's a really good pick. Uh, and then once you get to 37, that's when things start to get a little bit more fun. I, I know, Ralph, you had mentioned someone that you think would make a lot of sense for the Rays at that point. Yeah, I, I was going to mention Mason Wynn, who is one of the more exciting two-way players, if not the most exciting two-way player in the entire draft. He can pitch. You know, he's up to the high 90s with, you know, high raw spin rates on his four-seam fastball. He's got a hammer curveball as well that will drop down to like, you know, 80 to the, the high 70s. Um, and at shortstop, he's a decent prospect as well with power and athleticism and the ability to stick at the position. So he's a true two-way talent. And we've seen Tampa go after guys like this. Uh, Tanner Dobson, you know, obviously Brendan McKay. Would this be a fit, you know, potentially uh, at 37, simply because they'll have some money that they might be able to draw a win at that position and actually get him to sign? I know you mentioned off air, there's been some rumors that maybe when uh, withdraws his name from the draft, that remains to be seen. There's only a few days remaining until we get there. But mm -hmm. I do think Wynn fits the MO of the Tampa Bay organization. He's a great athlete as well. And somebody they can dream on and sort of play with, uh, with a few different outcomes uh, that he could potentially, or a few different paths to potential major league outcomes. So uh, Wynn is an interesting guy for me. And that's a name that I do like a lot at 37, though. I haven't actually heard any rumors of him being, you know, relate, related or, uh, or or Tampa Bay being interested in winning at that pick. Yeah, I mean, the thing you need to remember about Tampa Bay is they do not draft for need. Uh, and frankly, I wouldn't even say they don't necessarily take the best player on the board. What they want is they want versatility. They want value. They want athleticism. They want all of those uh, superlatives. And Mason Wynn, something that I don't think you'd mentioned it, he, he may be a starting pitching prospect, but he is an 80 athlete. I mean, the guy has uh, plus speed. He can play a good shortstop. Uh, the bat projects to hit uh, at least average. And, you know, they've got Wander Franco. They've got Vidal Brujan. They've got Willie Adamas. Last year, they got Greg Jones. They are not in need of middle infield prospects. But they always seem to turn their value, what they have in their organization, into more value. I'm, sure. Guys aren't even talking about Lucius Fox anymore, and he's not a, a non-prospect. So it wouldn't surprise me if they went shortstop, shortstop again and really started to leverage some of that value in you know potential future trades or uh, moving some of these guys that are elite athletes to center field or left field and just mixing things up a bit. Yeah, and I even think they like pitchers with – two-way backgrounds you know we mm -hmm. saw a guy last year go to them out of Campbell really exciting on Seth, Seth Johnson who was a guy that sort of popped up and his stuff continued to tick up even in pro ball so 
Uh, I think it kind of fits their MO. They're always one of the more interesting drafting teams. They certainly go to, you know, uh, march to the beat of their own drum, but it's worked for them and they're incredibly smart and incredibly analytically savvy. So Tampa is one of those teams that even if they don't have a top 10, top 15 pick this year, there's still somebody sitting at 24 that's really, really interesting to follow. Part of that is that pick at 37, but the other part of it is just their overall philosophy to acquiring talent. And we've seen that play out over the last couple of years. Joe, thanks for joining me. Everyone out there, thanks for watching and tuning in. Don't forget to tune in on draft night as we go pick by pick with analysts like myself and Joe, a bunch of other folks from Prospects Live, and even some special guests from outside Prospects Live are going to be breaking down all of the picks on day one and day two as well.